Spookiness is nothing short of inevitable on Halloween. As the lights dim, children and adults gather around campfires, taking turns with flashing a light to their faces, and start narrating fictional stories with ghosts, witches, and haunting places. But as they say, there is no scarier story than a real one. From strange disappearances to mysterious deaths and all in between, this is part one of the scary and horrific real stories that transpired around the day where spookiness would otherwise be expected. And without further ado, let's get into it. On the cold night of October 31st, 1977, in Lawton, Oklahoma, 19-month-old Nima Louise was placed into her crib to sleep in her bedroom with all windows shut. To their horror, her parents awoke the next morning to an empty crib. Nima was gone. Desperate attempts to locate her led nowhere until a month later, sadly, her small body was found in a refrigerator in an abandoned house, where it was later determined that Nima was placed in while she was still alive. A year prior to the incident, three-year-old twins, Tina and Mary, were abducted from their home and taken into a different abandoned house and placed in an old refrigerator. Mary sadly perished, but brave Tina not only survived, but was able to identify her abductor as the area's teenage babysitter, Jacqueline Rubido. Years later, Jacqueline received a life sentence for Mary's death, but died in 2005 from liver cancer. Although Jacqueline allegedly babysat for Nima as well, no physical evidence against her were found to link her to Nima's disappearance and murder, and the case remains unsolved and heavily debated to this day. May Nima Louise and Mary rest in peace. Our second story takes us back to the year 1963. It was Halloween night. Over 4,000 ice skating fans gathered at the Indiana State Fairgrounds Coliseum in Indianapolis as they were hosting a Halloween special skating show called Holiday on Ice. Few minutes past 11, as the ice skaters were setting into the final scene of their show, an explosion occurred that shook the whole arena. As it turns out, a rusty propane tank was leaking gas throughout a badly ventilated arena. The explosion was ignited once the gas leak reached an electric popcorn machine. The blast claimed the life of 74 innocent people, and 400 others were injured. The fire marshal who attended the scene described it as the most gruesome one he ever experienced. On the Halloween afternoon of 1955, Marilyn Daman, along with her two children, Stephen two and a half, and Pamela just a few months old, walked a couple of blocks away from their home on East Meadow in New York to get some bread from the supermarket. She thought she would be quick and decided to leave the stroller and her two children right by the sidewalk outside the store. She came back out just a few minutes later, but her children were nowhere to be seen. A frantic search recovered Pamela, who was found a few blocks away still in her carriage. Thousands of volunteers were combing the area and knocking on every door in efforts to find little Stephen, but no luck. Stephen was nowhere to be seen and is still missing to this day. 
Stephen Craig Daman was born on December 15th of 1952. Due to his age, they believed he was too young to have wheeled his sister's stroller through the traffic, and following an investigation, the conclusion for his disappearance was kidnapping by a stranger. In late November of the same year, the family received three consecutive ransom notes by a college student demanding money in exchange for Stephen's return. As it turned out, this was a hoax, or rather, a very cruel and heartless act. Although no trace of Stephen was found, the story resurfaced a few times over the years. In 1957, just five years after Stephen's disappearance, an unidentified boy's body was found in a box in Philadelphia, notoriously known as the boy in a box, and theories speculated that it could be Stephen due to some physical resemblance. Few characteristics were similar, but some differed, and DNA testing conducted in 2003 excluded this theory. In 2009, a man from Michigan, who believed he was adopted, was searching for missing children born around his birthday in the hopes of finding his real origins. He found similarities between himself and Stephen and subsequently underwent DNA testing. Sadly, the results proved no familiar relation. Stephen would be 70 on December of this year. When he was last seen, he was wearing dunkeries, a blue shirt, red sweatshirt, and brown shoes. Stephen had a small scar on his chin and a birthmark resembling a mole on the back of his right calf. Hopefully, he's still alive and well somewhere. What did you guys think of these cases? Did you hear about any of this before? I hope you liked them, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up and join me for part two of the true scary stories for October. See you then.